Luxor is the modern name for ancient Thebes, the religious and secular capital of Egypt during the New Kingdom and one of the greatest cities of the ancient world. Here on the east bank of Thebes are located two of the most important temples of Egypt, Karnak and Luxor. Karnak Temple is actually the largest complex temple in the world and was known as Ipet Isut, the most selected of places. It covers a truly massive area consisting of three separate enclosures. Karnak for the god Amun, South Karnak for the goddess Mut, and North Karnak for the god Montu. The Amun Temple's enclosure also includes small temples dedicated to Ptah, Opet, and Khonsu, as well as other small chapels dedicated to other deities. Karnak Temple was built in the Middle Kingdom and added to until the Roman period. Most of the surviving remains date to the New Kingdom, including nine of the ten pylons. Pylons 1 to 6 are oriented west-east, leading to the main shrine of the temple, while pylons 7 to 10 lie on a north-south axis leading to the Temple of Mut in South Karnak. Most remarkable of all is the great hypostyle hall, built by Kings Seti I and Ramses II, in the area between pylons 2 and 3. The hall is crowded with 134 immense columns. Twelve columns in pairs run through the center of the hall. Each of these is about 22 meters high and ends in an open papyrus flower. The rest of the hall has rows of shorter, 15 meter tall columns, which end in closed papyrus buds. Behind the first pylon are located the three bark shrines of the gods Amun, Mut, and Khonsu, where the cult statues of the gods rested during the various festivals, before they were carried in a great procession from Karnak Temple on a small portable wooden bark to the key which gave access to a canal connected to the River Nile, where it was loaded onto a barge for sailing either to Luxor Temple during the Opet Festival or to the West Bank during the Valley Festival. As for Luxor Temple, which was called Ipet Resit, Southern Sanctuary, it is situated to the south and was directly connected to the Temple of Karnak by an avenue of sphinxes. Luxor Temple was mainly built by Amenhotep III and expanded by Ramses II, who constructed a huge pillared hall and pylon on a new axis in order to align it with Karnak Temple. Pylon and first court were added by Ramses II, who is also responsible for the colossal statues in and outside of this part of the temple. One of his obelisks still stands outside the entrance, the other is in Paris. The processional colonnade of the temple was unfinished at Amenhotep III's death, and its decoration was completed during the reign of Tutankhamun. The central sanctuary of the temple was reconstructed in the late 4th century BC by Alexander the Great. In Roman times, the temple was dedicated to the cult of the divine emperor. A Christian basilica was built in the northeastern corner of the first court, and later, in the Fatimid era, a mosque dedicated to the Muslim Sheikh Abu al-Haggag was built over the site. Luxor Temple's main function was to serve the Opet Festival, in which the cult statues of the gods Amun, Mut and Khonsu were carried in a great procession from Karnak Temple to Luxor Temple. The festival had been celebrated annually since the reign of Queen Hatshepsut of the 18th dynasty. 
It was held in Thebes during the second month of the season of the inundation and lasted for about 22 days. It was linked to the flood of the Nile and its symbolic fertility. It is one of the most important festivals in ancient Egypt. One of the purposes of the festival was to renew the authority of the king and his ties to the royal ancestors and his bonds to the gods. Much of our information about the Opet festival comes from the reliefs engraved on the walls of the great colonnade of King Amenhotep III at Luxor Temple. Here you can see the beautifully executed scenes of the Opet procession. The western wall shows the southern procession and the ceremonies from Karnak to Luxor. And the eastern wall shows the return journey. The scenes of the journey from Karnak to Luxor are divided into five episodes. The first episode depicts the king and the gods in Karnak Temple before their departure to Luxor Temple. The second episode depicts the barks of the king, queen, and the Thebian triad, Amun, Mut, and Khonsu, being carried from Karnak Temple to the river. The third episode depicts the river procession of the Opet festival sailing to Luxor with the celebrants. The fourth episode depicts the barks arriving at Luxor Temple, and the fifth episode depicts the king and the barks in Luxor Temple. The festival scenes begin with the king burning incense and pouring a libation before the barks of the Theban triad in Karnak Temple, promising the gods that he will renew their cult. The king is presenting various offerings to the bark of Amun. Below the bark of Omun Ra, there are eight divine staffs representing several deities, granting the king eternity upon the throne, victory against every foreign land, power of Omun Ra, and kingship of the two lands. Four figures of the king are shown holding up the sky sign. The barks of the goddess Mut, the god Honso, and the king are in their shrines awaiting departure from Karnak Temple. Then the barks of the Theban triad and the king are being carried beyond the pylon of Karnak to the Nile on the shoulders of priests with shaved heads. During the procession, the images of the deities are veiled. The barks are surrounded by bright feather plumes and fan bearers. The fans represented the air it moved. It was an active, functional symbol of breathing and therefore of life itself. There are priests wearing leopard skin mantles, walking beside each bark, taking care of the deity's needs. In front of each bark, a priest is burning incense. A priest sprinkles milk in front of the barks, which are thus symbolically floating on milk. A priest plays the drums and trumpeters announce the beginning of the procession. Then the barks are shipped onto the barges for sailing to Luxor Temple. The river procession begins sailing to Luxor Temple. The barges of Amun, the king, Mut, Khonso and the Queen are towed southward upstream by boats under sail and by a group of men who pull at ropes as they proceed along the banks of the Nile. The procession is accompanied by a large number of celebrants, as festivals for the Egyptians was a time of joy especially for the common people, who were able then to freely participate and enjoy the generosity of their gods. There are musicians playing the trumpet and the lute, clapping their hands and holding boomerang-shaped clappers. There are also priestesses shaking the sistra, Nubians playing the drums and stick fighters dancing. Royal chariots, standard bearers and soldiers are leading the procession and people are gathered on the shores to catch sight of the barges. A man wearing a military kilt chants a hymn of praise to Amun-Ra. When you are in the bark, mighty of prow, you appear beautifully, O Amun-Ra. Everyone gives praise to you. The whole land is being in festival, while your eldest son, your firstborn, rose you to Opet, 
may you give him an eternity as king of the two lands and everlastingness, consisting of years of peace. May you endow him with life, stability, and dominion, and establish him as a ruler of joy. May you reward him with millions and myriads of jubilees, namely your beloved son, whom you have placed upon your throne. On arrival at Luxor Temple, the deities are greeted by high officials and princesses. Sacrifices are made by butchers. Booths of food and drinks for offerings line the route from the river to the temple. Troops of acrobatic dancers and musicians welcome the god and perform for his enjoyment. Then the deities rest at the triple shrine constructed to hold the barks of Amun, Mut and Khonso before they are taken to their shrines within Luxor Temple where the ritual ceremonies of the festival begin. The king starts the ceremony by burning incense in front of the divine kiosk which contains the bark of Amun-Ra. Although this ritual was taking place 3,000 years ago, it is reflected in the ritual which still exists till now in the feast of the Muslim Sheikh Abu al-Haggag. Abu al-Haggag was a venerated Muslim Sheikh who settled in Luxor around 1245 AD and whose mosque and tomb lie within the temple proper. The modern festival is celebrated each year in the Muslim month of Shaban and has kept in modified form many of the ancient festival traditions. Luxor is then transformed during the festival into a three-day-long carnival.
When you are in the park, mighty of prow, you appear beautifully, O Amun Ra. Everyone gives praise to you. The whole land is being in festival, while your eldest son, your firstborn, rose you to.